In this video, we're going to review function machines. And today, in class, we looked at what's my rule tables, or better known as function machines. The first type of function machine that we see here on the board uh, is one of the most common, uh, one of the most simplistic function machines in which our inputs are given, our rule is given, and we need to find our outputs. So the first step to solving these types of problems is to take a look first at our inputs. These values we place into our function machine and a rule will be applied to them. That rule will change our inputs and give us finally an output. So to solve this first problem we will take our first input which is 30, apply the rule to it, Add 30. So to show our thinking, we can do the problem here. Our input is 30. We apply our rule to that, which is to add 30. So we know that our output should be 60. Similarly, when we place 80 into our function machine as our input, we add 30 to that, and our output should be 110. Moving a little bit faster now, if our input is 20, we apply our rule to it, we add 30, so our output is 50. Take a look at the next two sets of inputs, 150, 290, and see if you can solve these on your own. Taking a look at 150, when we apply our rule to it to add 30, our output becomes 180. Lastly, when 290 is our input and we add 30 to it, our final output becomes 320. Next, our second type of function machine is when our outputs are given, and our inputs are unknown. And in order to solve these problems, we need to think a little bit backwards. For instance, our very first output that's given is 50. So we know that our final product is 50, but we're not quite sure what our input is. We can think of this in a couple of ways. One way would be what number minus 80 gives us our output of 50? We can also look at this in sort of reverse. We take our output, which is 50, and now we need to do the opposite of our rule. The opposite of subtracting 80 would be to, of course, add 80. So we take our 50, add 80, and we would get 130. And we can check this problem by, of course, dropping 130 in as our input. 130 minus 80, well, does that give us 50? Of course, absolutely. Similarly, we ask ourselves, what input minus 80 would give us our next output? Our next output is 210. Well, I know that if I put 290 in as my input, I subtracted 80 from that, I know I'll get my output of 210. Take a look now at the next set of inputs and see if you can come up with the correct inputs. A common mistake students make is that they'll take our outputs when they are given and they'll incorrectly put an output up here in the input section. 
and they incorrectly think, well, 20 minus 80, that might give me negative 60. When in fact, in order to solve these problems, we need to make sure that we always place our outputs in the correct location. And we ask ourselves, what value minus 80 gives us 20? And we know that the value 100 minus 80 gives us the output of 20. Take a look at our next set of inputs. Lastly, in this next type of function machine, we take a look at a function machine where both inputs and outputs are given. In other situations, the output is unknown. And lastly, in some situations, our input is unknown. In order to solve these problems, let's take a close look at the places where both our inputs and our outputs are given. In our first instance, 49 is our input, and 72 is our output. What change has gone on between our 49 and 72? Or how do we get from 49 to 72? If you correctly got this answer correct, you recognize that our rule is to add 23. 49 plus 23 gives us 72. And we can take a look at two different sets of inputs and outputs to double check and make sure that our rule is correct. For instance, let's take this input, 272, apply our rule to it, and see if we come up with the output of 295. 272 plus 23 is in fact 295. So recognizing that our rule is 23, we should be able to solve the following problems. In the second set, our second input is 151. We apply our rule to it to add 23, and we get the output of 174. 151 plus 23 gives us our correct output of 174. Again, the most difficult and most common problems that are made are in this next set when our outputs are given, for instance here, with 611. In this situation, we need to ensure that we place our 611, our first output, here. And we need to ask ourselves, what input, when applying our rule of adding 23, would give us our output of 611? You can also recognize that we can take a different approach to this problem, and we can take our output of 611 and go in the opposite direction, do the opposite of our rule. What is the opposite of adding 23? Absolutely, that would be subtracting 23. So we can take our output, 611, and subtract 23 from it to get our input. And if you did that, you would correctly find that your input is 588. We can double check this by saying, by placing our input in the correct position in our function machine. 588 plus 23 is equal to our output, which was given, of 611. See if you can go ahead and come up with our last problem. Don't forget. Place your input here in the correct input position in our function machine. And make sure that you place our output here. The question then becomes, what input plus 23 gives us an output of 503? If you correctly solve this problem, you see that 480 
plus 23 gives us our output of 503.